Hello, how are you doing? This is Pass again. Today, I'm at the Bowers Museum. So many uh, things that I want to share with you. They preserve all the stuff that they have back in the days and dynasty time and all the times between the tribal times. Upon entering, you will get a sticker like this on your chest. You paid for your uh, entrance fee. The Bowers Museum had everything. They had all kinds of uh, nice uh, wooden carving. And I really enjoyed all this uh, stuff, carving up all those uh, boats that they had back in the days. Welcome to the Bowers Museum. The mission is to bring history back to life by demonstrating the arts and clothing to the facilities. People of all ages are eager to learn about the lifestyle, ritual, and beliefs. In ancient times, there were no laws. Life is short due to the attacks and living in a dangerous world. Facts exposed in Bowers Museum. When I arrived, it surprised me because the place was exclusive compared to the brochure. I walked outside to appreciate the landscape, waterfalls, and structure. If you have not come here, I recommend the viewers to watch this video. I will be more than happy to give everyone a tour. In my opinion, the museum is underrated. The staff was enthusiastic to explain anything unclear. The adventure begins now. Basically, the Bar Museum, it, it brings the whole culture in one place that they were trying to do. If you really want to know about the history and the past and during those primitive times. A thousand years ago, the edge of the Pacific Ocean, there was a small island with three culture types. Melanesia, Micronesia, and Polynesia. Somehow, one of the tribes managed to develop a canoe and navigation to travel near the other islands. The tribe shared the ritual and beliefs to ally. Together, the natives was able to travel thousand miles by canoe. New Guinea, New Caledonia, Vanuatu, New Zealand, and Hawaii are strong groups. The ones who rebelled against the tribe were eaten by the cannibals. As the years grew, the island were trading animals. One of my favorite of the museum is the canoe, how they carved everything. Just imagine back in the days they used to use everything handmade. It's very interesting how they carved it up, real nice. And they even had decoration. The necklace is worth power was presented by two men who will be the ruler of the island. The necklace came with sperm whale's teeth. To help strong warriors to defeat their enemies, they practice their fighting skills each day. And just imagine back in the days they used to work Coconut to make a bowl if you want to eat some. They use that as a plate to eat something. In the 18th to the 19th century, Samoa used kava and coconut shells as drinking cups. In those early times, they learned to carve woods to separate the wild hair of the coconut to avoid choking. To eat, they utilized their fingers. In the 20th century, Vanuatu Island had developed skills to carve the woods mainly to honor the ancestor who died with high position in the tribe. The head was made of mud and different types of wood. They would gather by the fire at night to dance. All the kings would eat and be entertained. As the years go by, they developed their tribal moves and drums to, for music. So I like the cultural costume that they had and the tribal costume. Very interesting how they, had, they wore that back in the days. The picture you see is the Kilbati warriors. The helmet is made of porcupine fish and human hair. The weapon is sharp made of whale teeth. The vest is made of coconut fiber. Banks Island developed its statues made of woods. The culture and belief are almost the same, which is to present the ancestor with their high power. Or with different style of carving, the tribe also placed the statue in front of the tikis. 
Just imagine wearing all those uh, tribal hats and all those necklaces that they used back in the tribal times. It's very interesting, ain't it? They use teeth, they use uh, feathers, they use everything they could think of handcrafted. The tribe believes in immortality. Once the king dies, they separate the decomposing skin from the skull to create mass for a new look. The head will have designated place to worship the old king. Many died of unknown disease, sanitation was not implemented, and lepers were known on a certain island. In New Guinea, known as the Dani people, wore a necklace made of human fingers to remember their loved ones. The family could not accept the early death. The memory lives up upon seeing the pride on the neck. I'm not going to talk about every little thing, but I'm going to talk about the most important thing about the topic in the Bowers and what they have that's very amazing that they have in the Bowers Museum. The arrow was carefully crafted to destroy the target, mainly the enemies. It is designed to tear skin if trying to take it out from the affected area of the body. The war shield purpose was to protect the body from the sharp object. It is represent territory to confront the strange enemies. New Guinea Island at the time had all the advanced weapons and the protection. The Dani people were creative craftsmen. They taught the young to be good hunters. As the new generation grew, they continued to improve their system. When you go in, there's uh, volunteers to assist you to all the stuff that you wanted to learn about that one specific area. And you just gotta ask around with the staff and they more than happy to tell you what happened to all those artifacts that they had in there. Ceremonial bone dagger is known as Yina and Amiya Ava. The Abelam and Latmul people were the ones who utilized the human bones to create sharp objects. The weapons usually presented during the sing sing dance and hunting for food. The daggers designed with birds, some of the species are extinct today. In the early days, Latin people are artistic carving on stone also. The solava or bagi was developed in the early 20th and mid centuries. The exotic shell was developed carefully to create fashion on the island. When the male falls in love with a special woman, they would use this priceless jewelry for the bride. The man would bribe the parents with exotic food, nice clothing to accept the blessing. New Guinea has one of the most active volcanoes. 50,000 years ago, before the westerner ever stepped foot on the island, the native would draw objects on the stone explaining the evolution of man. They use pictographs. In the present time, the native still practices dance and develop new style of creating masks. The tradition is strong today because they believe it is a way to communicate with the gods. The Latmo people struggles with the hunting for daily living. The culture is being performed on every island to make the world understand how the life of the primitive world. It was nice having you. I just want to say thank you for watching my video and if you like this kind of topic please subscribe to my channel so I could uh, upload more videos like this in the future. If there's anything you want to know about this place just leave a comment below so I could talk more about it. Thank you.